Hey, what's up everybody? Are you looking for a great stabilization software as an alternative to Real Steady Go? Well, the all new Gyroflow 1.0.0 might be for you. This software is free, it has more options, and did I mention that it's free? It's amazing, let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so what is Gyroflow? It's an advanced open source gyro assisted video stabilization for cinematography, drone video, and much more. Gyroflow has been around since 2020, but the all new version is so much easier to use and it's not fiddly. It's really awesome. Right out of the box, you install it, you can start using it right now. This software is packed with a ton of features. It has more features than Real Steady Go, and it works with almost any camera and gyro combination. So you can use it with your cinema camera. You could use it with your GoPro. You can use it with a run cam. You can use it with your Sony camera. You can use it with almost anything that has gyro data or you can add gyro data and match it with any camera. Okay, so this is gonna be a multi-part video series that I'm doing. In this first video, we're gonna take a look at using gyro flow as a replacement to Real Steady Go. Now, I'm a Real Steady Go fanboy. I've been using it for about 10 months and I absolutely love that software. I tried to use Gyroflow in the past, but I found it extremely cumbersome and it really just didn't help my workflow as Real Steady Go was very easy to use, plug and play, and you're out the gate. But it did limit you on some options. You couldn't make real fine adjustments like you can in Gyroflow and you were also only stuck with using GoPro footage with this software. Unless you did a lot of crazy workarounds and you uh, combined files with gyro data and all this mess and it just took way longer and it made your workflow way worse. So we're going to try gyro flow as a replacement for a real steady go. So I did film a 4x3 file which is normally how I film with my GoPro because I usually run it through real steady go. So let's go ahead and open up that file and you'll see that the Motion data is already synced with that file because the GoPro file actually already has it synced in. Now, this is ran without HyperSmooth. Um, I will do another test uh, to see how it does or if it's even possible to run it with HyperSmooth. But it uh, looks like it already got the lens profile for the Hero 10. It's got the frames per second, so everything looks correct here already out the gate. Um, there are some different... Um, there are some different stabilization modes that you can use. Um, I'm just gonna set it as none, because uh, that's how it came in. Now, you can uh, synchronize your data. Now, I have got a warning before when I try to sync here. It does tell me that, hey, this data is already synced. Um, let's go ahead and try it and see what happens with the auto sync. Um, the file, the video should already be in line with the gyro data, but let's take a look and see what happens. Yeah, it says, uh, it, this file already uses synced motion, so it doesn't uh, advise putting in any additional ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and just right click and delete the sync points. Um, and now you can mess with the field of view here, so you can punch in, you can see that this is probably, a, the way that these these are up all the way, the smoothness. So, you know, you can adjust that and your field of view may change. I'm just gonna run this through, just try it really super smooth, which, you know, it's probably overkill, but let's go ahead and find a field of view that looks like it's within that safe zone. And again, you can view that safe zone under here under advanced. It will toggle uh, what it thinks is a safe zone to use based on the movements and things that it um, gets throughout the flight. And what that means is you won't get these black bars protruding into this safe zone. So let's go ahead and just move this in. Like I said, I am gonna go ahead and just go for maximum smoothness here. Let's go ahead and play this back. We'll turn off the volume. There we go, turn off the volume there. Um, yeah, you can see that it is looking very smooth. You can toggle off here again. So here's what it looks like without any smoothing. And here's what it looks like with. You can see that the lens uh, distortion is uh, also applied there. You can also turn it off by uh, doing your stabilization type, you can set it to none, no smoothing. So now it's just doing the lens distortion correction, but it's not doing anything with stabilization. So I'm gonna try this uh, dampening per axis. I, I seem to like that because you have more control over each individual axis, even though right now we're just gonna kind of max it out. Uh, I'm not worried about rolling shutter, so we're not gonna mess with that. Uh, this looks like the bitrate out of the camera, so I'll leave that. And that is the original um, output size that that I would that I would like to see. Um, 
Actually, no, it's not. So there is 4K. There's a true 4K resolution there. And I did see a little bit, you saw there on the side, looks like it did crop in a bit. Now this could be changed with dynamic cropping, you could probably set it to no cropping. Uh, that might be a safer way to do it so it's not kind of breathing in between uh, on the footage here. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and export this out. And it's going to export it to the same location as your file. So let's go ahead and render this out. Um, I already did it. I already tried to export before, so it just wants to know if I want to override it. Yes, I do. One downside I've noticed, it does take a considerable amount of time longer than Real Steady Go. All right, so this is what the final product looks like, and I am super impressed with this. As you can tell, it's working very, very well. Of course, I went a little overboard with the stabilization, but I just wanted to see what it could do, and man, this is really great. Again, this software is free, and this whole new version of 1.0.0 is so great because the old version was such a fiddly mess. You had to go in and combine files, go into terminal mode, uh, you know, batch export things, recombine files, so it was just really a mess. But this new version, this new GUI, easy to use, one piece download is amazing. I would highly recommend you guys uh, try it out if you haven't. If you are enjoying this software, please consider donating to the developers. They did a really great job with this software. Remember, this is a part one of a multi-part series. I'm also going to do DVR footage and using your gyro data from your flight controller. And just as a point of reference, I know I showed it in the beginning, but this is the original flight footage. So you can tell there's lots of little bobbles and dips and things in here too. I mean, it's not that it's terrible, but uh, yeah, there's definitely a ton of movement that this thing smoothed out, stabilized, and it does look amazing. All right, so this is Real Steady Go versus Gyroflow. Can you tell which one is which? Yeah, kind of hard, isn't it? Looks pretty good. So yeah, like I said, guys, this new software really is amazing. I've only had it for one day because it was just released yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun using it. I'm going to try using it with some other cameras and see what kind of results we get. But yeah, do make sure you stay tuned for the next series. And uh, if you guys like my videos, please make sure you drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. This is Lee from Adventure FPV, and we will see you in the next video.